Uh, today is Wednesday, October 17, 2018. This is the meeting of the Kubernetes CSI implementation group. Um, first of all, thank you to Chang for uh, splitting this uh, giant meeting notes document out into two separate docs. The old version of the document is archived over here, and the new version captures Q4. Um, so thank you to Chang for that. Uh, let's go ahead and step through the doc. We're going to start with uh, the 1.12 release plan. And so the current outstanding items are uh, cutting 0.41 release for the following um, sidecar containers. Uh, what's the status of that? Sorry, I had to find the unmute button. <laughs> oh. Okay, so the status of that is that the drivers, um, driver registrar, uh, most of them are done except for attacher and nice. provisioner. Okay. And attacher is a permission issue um, and provisioner is, I think we're waiting for a, a pull request. So. so snapshotter is green. Yes. And the only other one is external provisioner. And this one is, uh, sorry, what was the issue here? The permissions problem. Oh, in the, in the, sorry, in the provisioner is not a provisions problem. It's, uh, there's two PRs. You see them down there, 148, 145. Got it. I think one's merged and one's not. Okay. I thought 148 was also merged. Oh, really? Okay. I, I, I didn't. Thought, I thought it's just, I was looking for that PR. Looks like it's already gone. Oh, good. It's merged. And so, it looks like it's also cherry picked as well. Looks like. Oh, wow. All right. That makes my <laughs> job easier. <laughs> I'll take care of it then. Okay. Uh, let's just double check that it was cherry picked. Uh, let me check that right now while we're here. Uh, this should be in the point four branch for requests. Yeah, it's a one fifty two. Yeah, okay. that one. Perfect. All right, cool. So we should be good to go. Excellent. Okay, and I'll go ahead and mark these as closed. Let's just delete it. All right, almost there. Um, external attacher permissions issue is this? Is there a, a issue open for this? Uh, anybody know what the ETA is? Okay. No, it's it's just uh, you just need to give me. Oh, okay. Permission issue. All right. <laughs> All right. Let me uh, let me do that right after this. Uh, yeah. Put me on Slack again if I forget. Sorry about. No problem. That. No problem. Uh, okay, so that's looking good. Hopefully, we'll get uh, 1.12 <laughs> out the door soon. Uh, next up is the uh, CSI tasks for Q4. Uh, first up, we have moving CSI persistent volume source and volume attachment API objects to V1. Um, it looks like we have pull requests already open for this. Uh, thanks to Jan. Yeah. Uh, I opened new ones, and Jordan is already commenting. OK. Uh, there's uh, one thing. Uh, sorry, I'll wait till you guys are done with this. Okay. Is there anything uh, that's blocking here, or Jordan's comments mostly uh, straightforward? Uh, not really, but I will try <laughs> to find some answer. Okay. All right. Wonderful. So we'll do this PR here. And then the second one was also replaced. Mm -hmm. 
So Jordan doesn't like that inline volume, so okay. All right, well, let me know if, uh, if you need help with that. Um, moving on, next item is Kubelet device plugin registration mechanism. Um, so the status on this was Vlad was gonna sync up uh, with Renaud uh, and figure out uh, what to do there. Um, any updates on that, Vlad? Yeah, I plopped some notes in there. Uh, I talked to him right before uh, uh, this meeting. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, overall, he's ready to, uh, he think that we can go to GA, but he's, he think that he might get some pushback. And I listed some, uh, I list uh, some, of, some of the concerns that he had brought up that others, especially in the node, uh, Signode might, um, might ask for, such as adoption, non-production usage, and also confirming that in our E2E, which I believe is correct, we're using um, the plugin watcher in our E2E, um, yep. CSI E2E. Yeah. Um, it's going to be the case yeah, as soon as the 0, 0.40 are cut and uh, Patrick updates the end-to-end -end tests. Okay. So that's definitely coming. Okay, good. Um, and there's a bug that I had pointed out earlier this quarter. So he's, Renault said his, he'll, he'll work on that. Um, mm -hmm. And other than that, um, he think that we should be able to go ahead and, and push through uh, 4GA for this. Awesome. And awesome. all the other concerns that were attached to this, he said mm -hmm. that they most likely they all can wait. Okay. So let's uh, uh, go ahead and get the ball rolling in terms of who we think the approvers are as soon as possible. Um, what I don't want okay. is for them to suddenly surprise us at the last minute and go, oh my God, where did this come from? Uh, let's get it in their face right. and, okay. often and be like, yo, this is coming. If you have any objections, let's hear them now rather than uh, at the last second. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I think uh, that's, that's, yeah, that's what he's going to do, but I'm, I'm going to make sure I, I kind of push as well. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks a lot for that, Vlad. Not a problem. Uh, next up is the CRD installation mechanism. I still haven't done anything here, so I apologize. I need to find time to get the add-on manager uh, PR out. Um, hopefully we'll do that soon. Next up is CSI external provisioner, uh, topology support. Uh, Deep, any updates on this? Yeah, so I have a PR out for the first one. Uh, got some review comments, uh, so addressing them, and uh, we'll take a look at the next one. Oops, sorry about that. Okay, and if you could paste your PR in here. Uh, yeah. Cool. Thank you. Uh, next up is moving CSI driver and CSI node info objects from alpha to beta. Um, this is currently blocked on uh, the CRD installation mechanism. Jordan also has concerns about uh, dependency for CSI volume source and changing the comment may be sufficient to satisfy him there. Uh, Moving CSI to beta, we did a scrub, or uh, we did a uh, review of the uh, 1.0 blocking issues this morning. Um, seems to be a fairly small list. If there's something that you want uh, to be part of 1.0 that's not in that list, please uh, reach out to me or uh, somebody in the CSI community to make sure that gets tracked. Uh, and of course, uh, there's a CCLA, I think, uh, Everyone here who's supposed to sign it has signed it except for Deep. <laughs> and uh, I think some of the Red Hat folks, Helmont, and uh, uh, I, I pinged Brad about it, so hopefully Brad could get that sorted out. Uh, next up is moving the CSI RBAC rule uh, definitions from Kubernetes, Kubernetes to external repo. Uh, Patrick is not on the line to give an update on that, so we'll skip over that. Uh, and we have splitting the uh, driver registrar into separate repos. Um, Luis, uh, do you have uh, plans to get started on this anytime soon? Uh, probably next week. Okay. Yeah. You're still finishing up the, I still, this is what I wanted to bring up. Um, I feel that um, 
our documentation is really lacking. Yes, I agree. And I, I, I don't know if we can call a release of one tool on that until that's complete. I, yes. I feel like the, the all of us, you know, of here should go and review it and just send PRs. Don't even worry about um, uh, how's it called using MD book or anything like that. If you don't want to build it, just send the PR and fix it, and I'll build it. So. What area? Other it pretty than much just goes through the whole thing. I'm getting a lot of comments and stuff. People pinging me directly on the WGCSI, just asking questions. Then, right. I mean, we just need to go through the whole thing. One of the things, main questions, mainly are around uh, if there's a node controller and a uh, uh, sorry, a node and a controller separate. Uh, you know, how, where does the driver register sit, for example, or uh, what are the switches to driver register? What what do I do in this situation? What, you know, you can just go through WGCSI and see all the questions and comments. We just need to go through it, make it better. I agree. Um, added it as a separate item, assigned to everyone. Uh, if you have time, please take a look at the documentation. Uh, and any small change that you can make, uh, throw out a PR, Luis will help review those. Um, think of it as if I was writing a CSI driver, what question would I have? And is that question answered in this documentation? I think uh, between 1.12 and 1.3 or 1.11 and 1.12, we made breaking changes inadvertently. Uh, the fact that we dropped the node uh, get ID in favor of node get info. That was a breaking change. We didn't capture that. I recently updated the release notes to capture that. Uh, and then there's a second change, which is now the Kubelet plugin watcher is enabled by default. And if you take your old driver and you just run it against uh, 1.12, it's not going to work because Kubelet plugin registration is going to fail. So you need to understand what flag to set on the driver registrar and there's really no page to tell you how to do that. So we should, we should capture that kind of information and documentation much better. Yeah. Could you add that specific thing in your bullets for there? Yeah. Um, like an upgrade. Uh, upgrading from 1.11 to 1.12 requires uh, two things. One was uh, Get node info must implemented, and the other one was uh, you need to um, oh plug in So just things like that, I think, throw people off because they're like, oh, my driver was working. I am now on 1.12. It's not yeah. working. What do I need to do? If there's a page that we can point people to, that would be very nice. I think the, the documentation we're looking for is more for users, not necessarily for, I mean, we need developer documentation too. Mm -hmm. But the little bit of documentation I did on the setup file it, it kind of reveals what's needed for users and it's it can get complex when you say user do you mean like user of the csi driver yeah 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 or what kind A of user of mind? well i mean exactly what you kind of listed here the the stuff like you know when what's the combination of what's the combination of uh, arguments to the CSI registrar that works, right? Because right. now we, we have so, a you know we have a mushroom. Idea, of those bargaining. things are the uh, you know that's the problem of the CSI driver vendor to figure out if the vendor provides mm -hmm. the right set of YAMLs to the end user. End user should not care about any of this. So the uh, driver uh, vendor owner needs to say uh, if you're running on one twelve, make sure you're running these YAML files. If you're running on 111, run mm -hmm. the normal files. If you're upgrading from 111 to 112, do this, this, and this. So yeah, that, right. that's, that's what we do. Doing I that. think people who are asking questions on that Slack channel are probably developers. Yes. They, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. But I think, yeah, that's part of the problem is even the developers have no idea what's going on. Yeah. And it's almost like we should do like a, like a, a class, you know, or like a, you know, like a, you know, how we started, yeah, like a little seminar, you know what I mean? Yeah. On uh, like a little recorded it's seminar. <laughs> Yeah. No, but you know, like a cute no, over there. Maybe, maybe I, I agree. I think that is a great idea. Uh, let's start with the documentation and then um, figure out how we can, what else we can do. But maybe a cute. Uh, I don't know if Saad, if you're talking to CNCF, yeah, QCon, we could just set up like a few hours. Just a, just a Q and A, CSI drivers, developer. I'm sure we can get some people. Even if it's a bar or something. I'll uh, I'll look into it. I think part of the problem there is. CSI is not officially part of CNCF, so that makes it a little bit more challenging to get stuff at KubeCon. Okay. Um, right. But I'll, I'll see what we can do. They just need to accept it. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They had something like, uh, I think, 8,000 applications for this, uh, for the Seattle KubeCon, and they accepted like oh my God. a much, much smaller portion of that. So uh, Maybe... Maybe I'll talk to my team. Maybe we can just set up something on the side from. Yeah, I know you guys are doing uh, something like yeah. on Monday. Yeah. Yeah, that would be good. But even Eight then, we are, we're only allowed to have 60 people. Uh, and they, it already got, um, what is that today? Uh, waiting list for like 200 and something. <laughs> so. Nice. All right, we'll sort it out. I mean, if nothing else, we could always do, uh, you know, like we do the. Uh, the the face to face meetings for the storage sig, we could set up something like that, or those classes that uh, Aaron sent up, set up with the Kubernetes one on one kind of thing. Uh, we could yeah, set up. Yeah. Uh, but I think the problem is clear. We uh, definitely need to communicate what we're doing and make it easier for a new developer to figure out what's going on and keep their driver running. Um, so everybody, please help with the documentation. Um, that is all. Yeah. Uh, moving on to something else I wanted to discuss. So for the CSI persistent volume source and volume attachment objects, I'm planning on opening up an issue about how read-only is specified in, uh, in, in Kubernetes. It's a mess. It's an absolute mess. So we have four different knobs to control read-only. One is the access modes on PVPVC. Uh, mostly mm -hmm. they control only the binding between the PV PVC and don't really affect anything else. So for example, you could have something that's read only once and then you could actually consume it as read write because the knob that controls it is different. So you have the access modes on PV PVC. Outside of that, you have uh, a read only field on the actual mount point inside the pod. So where you say I want to mount it into this directory, there's also a read only field there ostensibly that controls whether the mount point is mounted read-only or not. Then there's another read-only field on the uh, persistent volume claim, uh, next to the persistent volume claim name inside the pod, inside the volume. So you define what volumes you want, you point to a persistent volume claim, along with the name of that claim, you can specify whether that claim is read-only or not. Ostensibly that is used to control whether it's attached read-only or not. And then, of course, inside the volume source for each of the volume types, they have their own read-only, including in CSI, we have a read-only inside the volume source uh, that seems to overlap with the, the persistent volume claim read-only field. Uh, we're very inconsistent about how these different fields are used and where they're passed in. Uh, I'm going to open up a bug to try and clarify that, but... One of the things that I was considering as we move to beta is to maybe drop the read-only field inside the uh, CSI persistent volume source. Um, but uh, that's just a very like uh, high-level thought right now. I haven't really dug into it. I wanted to bring it up here with you, with you all. So this is the persistent volume claim volume source that has the read-only field. And then if you look at CSI volume source, uh, 
but for some reason it's not here. But persistent this, volume source. Persistent uh, volume source. Ah. Uh, persistent. Yeah. There we go. This one here. There you go. There's another read-only field there. So I was thinking of potentially dropping this one since it's not yet GA. How would you express read only? Uh, so if you look at a, publish. Yeah, if you look at. Oh, okay. There's another read only field on the persistent volume claim source here. Um, but the counter argument uh, to this is that, well, the persistent volume claim source is only specified inside the pod, inside the volume definition inside of a pod. Uh, and that means that this read-only field is controlled at the pod level. You could have multiple pods referencing the same volume. Uh, and if that's the case, and this read-only field is different per pod, which one do you use for attach? Uh, so ideally, mm. it, this one shouldn't exist. And the PV-specific one below the CSI persistent volume source one should exist. And that one should control attach, read only attach or not. Uh, but this field is already V1, and so we can't change that. Uh, it might end up being that we need to create a truth table saying, if this one is true and the other one is false, here's what we do. If this one's false, the other one's true, here's what we do, and so on and so forth. Uh, but I just wanted to bring that up with you, with you all to kind of let you know this is... Mm kind of the state of the read only. Okay. Um, I'll open up a bug on that and I'll bring it up next time again. Um, but just wanted to get that out there. If there's any further discussions or thoughts, let me know. Otherwise we'll carry on. Okay, uh, that's all that I had for this meeting. Is there anything else anybody else wanted to discuss? I guess not. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for your time, and uh, we will reconvene on Friday. Thank you. All right. Take care, guys. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. All right. Later.